allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody, for appearing tonight. And Mr. Blatchmore, would you call a roll call for attendance, please? Trustee Pelkey. Here. Trustee Bernard. Here. Trustee Rodriguez. Trustee Arno. Present. Mayor Lebowski. Here. <coughs> I'm going to open up the meeting to the public. Before I do that, I'm going to read some guidelines for the public comment. Individuals wishing to speak during the public comment period must sign in. <coughs> Speakers must be recognized by the mayor. Speakers must step to the front of the room. Speakers must give their name, address, and organization if they belong to any. Speakers must limit their remarks to five minutes. Speakers may not yield any remaining time to another speaker. <clears throat> Board members may, with the permission of the mayor, interrupt the speaker during the remarks only for the purpose of clarification or information. All remarks must be addressed to the board as a body, not to an individual board member. And finally, <clears throat> speakers must observe the commonly accepted rules of courtesy, decorum, the dignity, and good taste. Interested parties or the representatives may also address the board by written communication. Uh, the first speaker we have on the list is uh, Brittany Turner. Hello, I'm Brittany Turner. I'm from Wilmington Maple Street right here in Rouse's Point. I'm petitioning the board to change the ordinance to allow us chickens to be raised here in the village of Rouse's Point. On the recommendation of Mr. Lebowney at the last meeting, I took, put together a petition, gathered some signatures. I'm at about 150. Um, I feel like that's a good start in the right direction. If no more is needed, I can definitely go out there and get more. But I feel like the, the it, residents are interested, and I feel like now is the time that we need to change this law. Thank you. You're welcome. I, I have received your permission, and all the board members have. We're going to review the petition, and we have some work to do. If we, uh, you know, we could have to uh, amend uh, the, the law as it stands now, and we have to adapt. Uh, if we do adapt the law concerning the chickens in the village uh, about the, the size of the yard and, and a few other things before we can make that determination. But I do appreciate you taking the initiative to get this petition and it shows uh, that we have a good part of our village that is interested in this uh, particular venture and uh, trust me, uh, we serve at the pleasure of the people and if this is what the people of the village of Ross Point want, uh, we will provide it for them, but like I said, I'm going to do some research, but, and we'll move forward on this as quickly as we can. Thank you. I did include also the the change that Plattsburgh made, just to help you guys out, make it a little easier. No, no. Yeah. Uh, you had a very good petition, and uh, <laughs> I'll commend you for your ambition, young lady. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, the next speaker is an Adam Kobe. Kobe. Oh, Kobe. Excuse yeah. me, I'm sorry. Uh, so I'm on 7 Pineview Drive. Uh, there's a new stop sign on Maple and is it Pine Street. Um, I talked to a lot of people. It's new and not many people realize it and they're driving right through. So I didn't know if there's a way we could get some type of flashing lights on the signs, even if it's for a year to bring awareness. As summer is going to happen, there's going to be people walking the school, this and that. It'd be cool if there was an accident. So just kind of a concern I've heard from a lot of friends in the area and wanted to actually do something about it and just complain, so I don't know. I appreciate that comment. Uh, I've spoke to uh, the trustee, or excuse me, the, the uh, administrator about this, and uh, we, we talked about maybe a flashing light to bring this to uh, the attention because anyone who's lived in a village, I'll take myself for an example, since I was raised here, it's, it's hard to adapt to it. Uh, I, I'm embarrassed to say I, the, I did it once myself. Uh, I wasn't going fast, but I drove through it, and I said, oh, hell, I drove through the uh, stop sign. But we have to do something, I believe, to bring it to, uh, especially the people that live in the village who's used to uh, driving down Maple Street without that stop. So uh, we are going to take that under consideration because obviously we don't want anybody hurt. Uh, we did this for a safety reason uh, to begin with, and uh, we would defeat the purpose if somebody got hurt without us taking every opportunity to make sure that they're aware of the stop. 
So I appreciate you bringing that to the board's attention. I don't know if anybody else on the board has anything you want to say about that. Well, I just think I agree. Same thing. I lived here for 30 years, and I myself drove through it. Um, I was thinking in the spring, once the snow gets away, we could probably paint a stop sign on the two new areas. You know, just so people would notice there's something there. So. Yeah, I mean, if we can get a flashing light or something. What, what we could do right now is add another stop sign on both sides of the road. So when you're coming down through. Oh, I see what you're saying. Get a visual yeah. on both sides, just on Maple. Because yeah. everybody knows when you're coming yeah. out of Pine, it's to stop. Right. But when you're going down Maple, maybe if we put the two double signs like we did over on uh, Chapman Street, or uh, State Street, and then another place we put some, where there's double. So your vision will catch both of them. Or at least one of them, right. rather than. Oh, that, that makes sense. Anything we can <clears throat> do to make it highlighted better than it is. Uh, oh, either uh, that, or if we get one of them battery operated caution lights and change the, the lens to red for now, you know, just to give them an idea that yeah. it's a new stuff. Well, it's just to bring it to the driver's attention, right. which is yeah. a good idea, Benny. Mm -hmm. You know, we, uh, we obviously that's close to the school yeah. and parents and everything out, so we, we, we want to make it as safe as possible. Anyone else? Um, and lastly, we have uh, Becky Kino. Hey, yo. your comment thank you very much and that uh, is all the people that want to speak to the board today so far uh, minutes of the February 6 2022-23 meeting everybody should have a copy of, uh, of that those minutes if nobody has any questions or amendments to those meetings I need a motion to uh, accept those minutes make a motion to accept the minutes as printed. Second. All those in favor of accepting the February 6, 2023 regular meeting, meeting minutes, uh, say aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, bills, Ms. Pelkey? Uh, no additions, no deletions. No, no additions? No. Okay. I need a motion to accept the bills as, as provided uh, to all the trustees. I make a motion that we pay the bills as written. Second. All those in favor of paying the bills, say aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. Uh, correspondence, Mr. Latchman. I have a few things for the board. Um, number one, I presented the board with the email from Brittany Turner uh, in reference to the, the local law, so I want to make sure I'm not going to read it since you're here. <laughs> you said you were coming, but I wasn't sure. The second thing I want to bring up to the board's attention is on February the 14th, we did receive an email from New York State Department of Environmental Conservation from Ethan Sullivan, and it's in reference to the new dumping station that we're putting up at the uh, sewer plant for the, dump, uh, for the raw sewage. The prints have been approved um, from New York State so that we can start having the sewage brought to the sewer plant rather than down at the, uh, the boat launch now. So we had a little issue. Um, there was some water that was in the pit and froze. We're waiting for it to thaw out. And it should be up and running uh, very, very soon. The next thing I wanted to bring to the board's attention is the village website page. Um, we're underneath contract uh, for the website, for the development of the website. Um, Treasurer Laterno, myself, and Mayor Labounty sat in on a um, video conference call and they're going to be redeveloping the village website just to bring it up a couple notches. The, 
price for the contract is going to be approximately $3,300. So I wanted to bring this to the board's attention and, and make sure that we have the board's um, support before we move forward um, renewing the contract for the village website. One thing that we did add to the new website that was lacking in the old website, the residents or even non-residents can um, go onto the village website and ask to, for alerts for anything new that's happening in the village and they'll receive the text message. So if there's a, a weather advisory or there's public skating or whatever it may be, if you opt in to receive a, a text message, you'll be uh, on the list and you'll automatically receive that. So I wanted to just turn that by the board so that we could get the approval to sign the, uh, the contract. It's uh, $3,300. Yeah, we would need a motion for that. Like a motion that we uh, get in the contract with revitalizing web services for the amount of $3,300. I'll second that. I need a roll call vote on that, Mr. Lightmore. Um, uh, Trustee Pelkey? Aye. Trustee Menard? Aye. Trustee Rodriguez? Aye. Trustee Arno? Aye. And Mayor Lavaldi? Aye. Contract for the updating of our website has been uh, approved. Uh, that's just basically as the administrator said, we're going to improve the information on that website to make sure the, the residents or non residents can see uh, what they need for information, whether it's forms or any alerts. And I think it's a good improvement for our village website. And it'll be a whole new look. So exactly. we're excited to, to get it. I have one other thing I, I would like to bring to the board's attention. Um, as the board members know, um, the water plant had an electrical fire approximately three weeks ago. In the event of the uh, fire in the, electric, in the uh, water plant, we lost our industrial system. Right now we're running on just the atom system for pumping the water. No frets for anybody in the, in the village. It's up and running and it's able to uh, um, to keep up. But we like to have a redundant system, so we want to have two systems up and running. We had a contractor come out. It's um, Next Year Contracting Inc. and they started doing the repairs for all the electrical within the water plant. What they found in the course of, of doing the repairs from the fire is that there's some non-compliance issues within the water plant and it was validated from Scott Decker from Commonwealth. What needs to take place is we need to install grounds to pumps and tanks from ground bar, install ground bars, install conduit and racks to support grounding system, exterior grounding rigs and ground wire to feeding ground bar provided by owner, pull out existing feeders typical of three and four replaced with proper size feeders with insulated neutrals and grounds and I have an estimate from them and I I would really look, like to do it in-house there's going to be a lot of work with, associated with it but the problem that we have is the cost from this contractor just so that we have a, a good idea just the material is $27,532. Now that's to bring up today's code. Correct. But the problem is, the building was built in 1968. That's like uh, compliance codes of anybody, even their residents. Uh, for instance, if you have a new house and you that you built in 2002, it doesn't meet today's codes. I mean, yeah, they want to come in and do all kinds of grounding. Uh, for instance, if you have a new house, they expect you to have tamper roof resistant outlets and, uh, and arc ball breakers. I mean, but if the building was built in 1968, I can see doing the grounding that has to be done, and uh, I think it could be done in house. Um, we did a grounding grid in our substation. Our substation is about a $7 million project, and we did our own grounding. That's what I said, we can do it ourselves. And it can be done in phases where you can do most potential hazards, if there's any, 
I mean, myself and Trustee Be uh, Arnold has been in there when there's been a foot of water on the, on the floor because of malfunctions. Um, to my knowledge, to my knowledge, there has been no electrical issues or electrocutions in there. I mean, yeah, to bring it up, everybody wants a new plan, and that's what our goal is, is to eventually have a new plan. But if we keep putting all new parts in this whole plan, we're never going to see it. No. I just, you know, I understand Scott Decker's concern because he's an electrical inspector. He goes to school every year. There's new codes that come out every year. And there's, there's restrictions. There's uh, new codes on new construction. I mean, this is you know, real. I, mean, I, could see uh, I guess my only question is, you would obviously know more than I would about it because your background is it. If we don't do this upgrade and this grounding and say, God forbid, somebody does get hurt, how is that going to affect us, either one of you can insurance wise? Would, would that put us behind the eight ball if we did do this upgrade and somebody got hurt? Or will it not, Mr. Lachmore or Mr. Belkey? I, 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 well, I think this is a recommendation of Mr. Scott Decker. I don't think he's sitting there holding our feet to the fire. I mean, when you look at, at grounding, I mean, the whole place is all metal. metal. Yep. All the pumps are metal, the tanks are metal, all the piping is metal. All the metal goes where? In the ground, throughout the whole village. That's the best ground route you can get. Yep. Your own houses are hooked to those metal pipes. You've got a lot of lightning storms and stuff like that. You never hit the building. Right. I mean, so, in your opinion, uh, Trustee Buggy, this is kind of overkill, would you say? I think it is. If it was a new facility, I'd be all for it. Because okay. it's an old plant. It's a 1968 plant that, right. that, you know, I understand the work that these contractors did brought everything up to code in that area. That's fine. At that time. That's fine what they did. Because it has to be brought up. As this stuff wears out and gets replaced, it needs to be brought up to code. And then, in order to bring it up to code, then we get it inspected by Mr. Decker and it's covered. But to inspect the whole building, I mean, once you get in there, where's the fine line? They're gonna look and say, oh, these breakers are old, they should be replaced. They're functional. Well, they've got to replace the whole panel. Right. So how big of a can of worms are you gonna open here? We're looking at a new water plant, eventually. I mean, our debt of our water system done in 2024. Hopefully we're in a better position and a better place to move forward in securing the funds for this water plant. But if we keep putting all kinds of money in this plant, they're going to say, you don't need it. And we're still, still going to have an old plant. We still have to remember, yeah, we have a 1968 plant. Right. Well, I mean, one of the biggest things I've talked to the people with the water is we're, we have good people who keep us in compliance yeah. and that Keep being in compliance so often doesn't put us at the top of the list. It puts us down in the middle or lower than that. And unfortunately, uh, the water plant been on hold for us, which we need, as you said, the Trustee Company in 1968. Uh, and we, we definitely need to have an upgrade. So uh, it, it does make sense what you said. How much money we're going to keep investing in an old plant? Uh, my only concern, like I said, I. I take a back seat to you, sir. I, I don't know about electricity and enough to make a statement, so that's why I'm relying on your expertise here. I would go through and do the initial grounding that has to be done. Okay. There is what they're saying, there's no grounds in there, I don't know. I mean, we'd have to you know, look at it and see what it needs. I believe that we can address it in phases where it's not $27,000. It'll still be safe. I mean, you know, they replaced old fuses with breakers. That was an upgrade. So that was good. I mean, those old, old style fuses that were in that disconnect, they probably never would have popped. And that's what caused the fire. I mean, that, that's my opinion. I mean, you know, my, my, like my that. understanding from Mr. Decker is if we don't do this, he's not going to give us the, uh, the tag to power up the industrial system. New work that they just put in, so he doesn't have no faith in his contractors. That's not what he's saying. He said that it needs to be a, need, a neutral and a ground needs to be brought in that facility. So he doesn't give us his tag. Then what, where does that put us? 
Only one system run. Only one so system. They, they, the system that burned, we can't use. It's only the Atom system we're, we're presently using that we can use until, according to what Mr. Decker wants us to bring this up to this grounding. Unless, the, I mean, the village has the authority to supersede Commonwealth electrical inspectors if the village desires to do so. Because there's nothing that says that the, that it needs to be inspected or that it needed to be inspected. Yeah. Um, I would like to have a meeting with Mr. Decker and, and, and have him point out his concerns. He'll be here tomorrow. And at least, you know, see if we're all on the same page because I think we need some more information yes. on exactly what Mr. Decker is referring to and how that's going to affect us long term and short term. I mean, I explained everything to Mr. Decker, what you just said. I mean, we just want to do something to meet our needs now because we're hoping in the next year or two we'll have a new water facility. So why would we want to spend thousands of dollars in it for something that may just be rubble at the end? And he's saying what he's allowing us to take place right now would be the minimum requirements that he would accept. I think we can debate this all day. I think we we need to meet with Mr. Decker. Definitely. Can I ask a question? Uh, oh, you, can I ask a question? question, young lady? Um, yeah, so I'm sorry. So I'm catching up a little bit, and I'm gathering that you guys have a grant application in for the new building. And because you were saying that if you were to improve this, that might bump you down the list. But are you able to communicate with that grant facilitation program to say, like, we've just had this emergency. Like, can you bump us up the list? Well, well, unfortunately, in the real world, it don't work that way. They, they, they give us a, they, they rate every municipality based on compl compliance means, whether their water is boiled so or good or something along that line. So we have to be compliant with what he's saying is up to code anyway. So we wouldn't get it if we don't do what this guy's saying. Okay. No. No. I mean, there's no okay. guarantee. There's oh. no guarantees we're going to get anything. We're on the list, and uh, they evaluate us based on a whole different bunch of factors. And so far, we haven't been able to uh, be on the list to get a new uh, grant money on it. So. Cool. Thank you. But I think uh, the, the best fun. idea that's come out of here, we have to meet with Mr. Decker. Fun. Excuse me? Uh, with Mr. Decker and get uh, more information as far as where, what he's thinking, why he's thinking the way he's thinking. Mr. Pelkey uh, has brought up some good uh, Good questions, and I think we need to clarify these questions and move forward as quickly as we can. Anybody else? If not, uh, anything else, Mr. Lightmore? No, that's all. Right. Yeah, I have. Uh, I'm gonna hop out, guys. Thank you for your time. Tom took a dozen over there. I have a couple of resolutions. Good night, bro. Resolution. 2023-5 is a budget modification. We're shifting some uh, money from different accounts. Uh, Mr. Letourneau, our treasurer, deemed this necessary. Um, if uh, nobody has any questions, I need a approval from the board to move this money around. So moved. Second. All those in favor of the budget budget oh, We need the roll call vote. Still action more. Trustee Palkey? Aye. Trustee Bernard? Aye. Trustee Rodriguez? Trustee Arno? Aye. Mayor Lavalde? Aye. Resolution 2023-5, the budget modification has passed. Um, we have uh, another resolution, 2023-6. Uh, we have two positions that were available coming in March for the village board. Those were trustee positions. Uh, we have two nominating petitions that were submitted and reviewed. Uh, the first petition was Dale Menard uh, of uh, Ross's Point, and the second petition was also Nicholas Southwick of Ross's Point. These are for two-year terms, and uh, I need uh, the board to approve those two nominating names uh, for election in March. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion. We accept them. Second. Roll call vote, Mr. Electron. Trustee Palkey? Aye. <clears throat> Trustee Menard? Aye. Trustee Rodriguez? 
Trustee Arno? Aye. Mayor Bounty. Aye. And the, uh, the two nominating names, Dale Bernard and, and Nicholas Alvick, will be put on the ballot for the March election in the village. Uh, the other resolution I have is 2023-7. Uh, we have some hourly increases based on the increase of minimum wage up to $14.20 an hour. It affected people in uh, different departments. It's uh, something we're required by law to pay at least a minimum wage. So uh, I need a motion to uh, put that into uh, the village law. Make a motion. We accept that. Uh, uh, raise up the hourly rate. Second. Second. Uh, Roll call vote, Mr. Mr. Lachman. Trustee Kelty? Aye. Trustee Bernard? Aye. Trustee Rodriguez? Trustee Arno? Aye. Mayor Bounty? Aye. Uh, resolution 2023-7, the hourly wage increase is passed by the board. And uh, the last thing I have is uh, the last meeting we had uh, discussions about uh, fire department training building. And it was my understanding that Trustee Kelty and Trustee Arno, who are members of the fire department, we're going to go to a meeting. Do you have anything to report, uh, Trustee Cocker? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, we brought it up at our last business meeting, and uh, the membership over there feel very strongly about their training uh, facility. Um, they understand that it does need work. Um, what they're asking for is for them to have more access to it, accessibility around the building, because it seems like the sand pile is creeping closer and closer to it and they can't get access to the south side of the building. And they're willing to take all the old siding off it and clean it all up, <clears throat> make it more look, make it look more like, like a construction trailer and put signage on it that it is recognized as a Riley's Point Fire Department training facility. And they asked us to give them a little time until the weather turns so they can do that work. Okay. And just to follow up on that, I. Uh, I went with the uh, fire chief, Mr. LeBlanc, uh, and Mr. Latchamore, and Mr. Cooper. We inspected the building, and he, uh, he, the fire chief, promised me that if we give him to June 1st, then he would fix the texture 111 on the building and fix whatever uh, was punky as far as the porch or inside the building itself. It looked to me, and Mr. Latchamore, you can chime in here if you want. Uh, basically, the inside of the building was in a lot better shape than I thought. The outside of the building was looked pretty rough because of the texture 111, but uh, they showed both of us and, and the code officer exactly what training you guys did with air packs and everything, and it, it seems like a very necessary tool for fire, the fire department. And it was indicated to me uh, that if they did not have this building, then they would have to send all the training people to Plattsburgh. So based on all the above, I, I, I think uh, it would behoove the, the board to give the fire department at least to June 1st to, uh, to clean. Well, why can't, instead of having them have to clean all around that building and stuff like that, why can't we put that trailer, that training trailer, over behind the fire station? That way to have access to a bathroom and stuff like that. I mean, sometimes you get Alberg over here to get Champlain. Uh, you know, sometimes there are 14, 18 people, you know, and if somebody has to go to the bathroom or whatever, you know, and, you know, I mean, you got men and women both. I mean, the bathroom right there, the water's right there. I mean, uh, was, was that idea brought up at the board meeting? Well, I think it's more of a, a zoning concern because uh, there was a zoning board member present. I mean, it had to, you'd have to get a variance. Uh, that's what my next question is. How is it going to affect our zoning law? And how does the firemen, uh, uh, are they on board of that? Are they, you know? The impression I got is they like to be able to access all the way. Somebody clean the north side of the building where there's a strip down through where you can actually almost drive a vehicle on the north side. But the south side is like the sand pile is like encroaching onto the building. So it's tough to 
maneuver on this. It looked like somebody took a bucket on the north side and just cleared that whole yes. area back yeah. there. That's what they did. Yeah, the village did. And, yeah. and, and if they would do that same thing to the north side or the south side, I think we would be getting somewhere because obviously with the branches and the small trees and everything else, it's become kind of a safety hazard to a certain extent, and it, it's an eyesore. Then when Jerry is out with the brush hog, maintaining the ditches, he can go right around the building at least and keep it somewhat maintained. Because it's more than mowing the grass around the, around the yes. building. It's, it's to make it look presentable and, and identify it as a training facility so people know what that building is for. That it's just not left there as an eyesore. Yeah. It's there as a training facility for the fire department. Are we all on board with the June 1st date? Yeah, yeah, it's okay, but I, I, I'd like to see it over behind the fire station. So. <clears throat> we could, we could talk about that further, but uh, for yeah. now, for now, we'll give them an opportunity to clean it up and, and improve it, and then uh, I will have further meetings if necessary with the, the, the administrator and the fire chief, and we'll go from there. And if, if you want, Trustee uh, Pelkey, I'll, you can uh, come with us and and uh, put your uh, expertise in it, and we'll go from there. Anything else in regards to that building? Okay. So right now, I think we'll give them June 1st. Uh, we'll speak to Adam Menard, maybe to clean up some of the, the brush around it, like you said. We do. And then we'll give them an opportunity, the firemen, to take the uh, Dexter 111 and then put some signage on it to indicate what the building is for. So if anybody in the village has any questions, it's well answered. Just one other question. Will it be the village's responsibility to maintain the outside grounds? Oh, we talked about that. The fire department said that they would clean up around the whole thing. But are we to maintain it afterwards, is it? like every other uh, municipal building? But, but, but the problem is, I don't, and I don't know, once again, uh, Brian, what we have for the fire department. They, they're, uh, the chief indicated they don't really have a lot of equipment to cut the branches and the trees that would be something that our, our village work crew would have to do or does the fireman yeah. have something along that well, line once it's maintained once it's cleaned up around it it'd be easy to maintain i mean yeah they got I'm, chainsaws and i'm stuff sure like you know i'm sure um, i mean you're only talking about a couple little limbs that are growing out along the side of the building but um, it's mostly to keep the grass and those cattail right. or weeds whatever those so the, the village crew will maintain it mow it around it stuff yeah. afterwards. At least brush hog it. Okay. Fire I'm, fire. Not, I'm not saying mow it like a lot, but at least okay. brush hog it. So I just so that I can get direction so that we maintain it's, it. Because they usually go out and do the um, they do the field though. They do the field and they do that uh, land that we have behind Lake Street there. The old trailer park. Yeah. They, they mow that like four times a year or so. While they're out, they can just take one trip around that or two trips around that training facility, and it would be. You're trying to keep idea going down the road anyhow. Right. Okay. No, it's a. Uh, I, I think we have the equipment from the village crew, and the fire department is a very important part of our village. So, uh, I think it would be incumbent upon us to, to make sure that their use of that building is safe and they have access to it, unfettered access to it. So. I think the village crew uh, should do that with the brush off, and then after that, the uh, fire department will take it upon themselves to uh, maintain it to a certain degree, and then the village crew will work in conjunction with them. Anything else in regards to this building? If not, then. Well, do we need a motion to accept that? So I'll make a motion that we get the fire department till June 1st to replace, uh, bring the training building. Up to respectable code, I guess. Yeah, up to the code levels as far as the the, uh, the safety of it and the uh, aesthetic pleasing of it and, right. and the signage that could be put on it, as Trustee Belkey said, to identify what the use of that building is for. I'll second that. All those, <coughs> all those in favor of uh, giving the uh, fire department until June 1st to get this building in order, say aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. Uh, June 1st, uh, we will convey that to uh, the fire chief that uh, June 1st is the date that he has to get this uh, building up to the code and, and stuff. So that's all I have. Uh, Trustee Arnold, do you have anything? Yeah, I just wanted to 
Well, the only thing I had was uh, local law for 120-25 animals on the chicken and stuff. And we're going to talk about that. I'm sure we're going to have to talk to the lawyer, Bill the lawyer. Yeah, we're going to have to have Mr. Renee dr draw up some uh, uh, paperwork and, on it and use his legal expertise and go from there. Because after our petition, obviously, the, like I said earlier, there's a there's a pretty good interest of 150 names. Of, uh, that indicates that there there is a, a number of the village residents that, that want this, and it's our job to provide it if we can. So we will go uh, in that direction as soon as we can. Okay, and the other thing I had is, you, are we still going on with this Rider A? Or the, we that, that is, uh, we got a couple phone calls into Mr. Murnane. Uh, we've emphasized to him the importance of this Rider A discussion because we need to obviously sell power, water, uh, to make it some, generate some revenue. And uh, we've all had a copy of this right array now for a while. Mr. Bernane uh, is uh, a little slow on the trigger as far as reacting, and uh, we just have to uh, push him a little bit because this is an important uh, part of our village and needs to go forward. So this right array, already in our tariffs for like our bylaws so what we want to do is we want to put some amendments to it correct for like well we got to eliminate the existing law that's on the books as far as the high, high definition uh, uh, power usage uh, that we have there and then we're going to have to adopt the right array which will talk about permits and how much power is going to be allotted and the supplemental power which we discussed about not affecting the village residents so all these things, but we need to that's have... That's what he has to do, right? That, that's what he has to do, we're waiting on him. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And, and trust because me... Uh, he presented us with just his right array, yeah. which yeah. has been in our tariffs. Yeah. I mean, uh, well, it's I already can, there. I, I can assure you that myself and the administrator have reached out to uh, Mr. Bernier on several occasions, and uh, we can't emphasize enough the importance of this to move forward, so... Once again, um, uh, if we don't get any action, then we're going to have to discuss what we want to do in the executive session. Okay. Well, that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Menard. I have nothing for this evening. Uh, Trustee Pelkey. Yeah, I have a question. Um, the Christmas tree down at the village office, I noticed the lights are still on and they're hanging. They're really popping to come in. Um, are we going to do something about this tree eventually? I mean, it looks pretty straggly. Um, the reason why I brought this up because about seven, eight years ago, we re received some uh, evergreen trees from the power authority. And we ended up with six or eight of them and we didn't know what to do with them. So back when I was a supervisor, I planted them along the back of the blue building with the intentions of letting them grow, because when we got them, they're only like six foot. With the intentions of letting them grow to about 20 feet, then we would transplant them in the areas where these trees are getting to the point that they're hard to decorate, they're, the limbs are broken on them, and they're getting pretty small. This hand has raised their health. You know, they've, they've pretty much exceeded his life expectancy down there. So, I don't know if the village board would consider on eventually taking these trees and transplanting them to where this big tree is, put a new one there. Because we've replaced that one once before. Back in 86. Uh, uh, J. Mott Billiard brought that one here. <clears throat> and that was like an 18 or a 20 foot or, or maybe a 16, 16 to 20 foot. 16 foot, yeah. Yeah, and he, he bought one in a park and one there. All right. So I was just wondering if the board would consider on thinking about doing something with these trees so they're more manageable. I, I take responsibility for that, Trustee Pelkey. Um, Jason came up to me and he, he asked me about the lights on the tree. And what he indicated to me is if you remove the lights, there's a possibility of breaking the limbs. And, you know, it could, 
damage the appearance of the tree. So I said at this point in time, why don't we just leave the lights on? If we make a decision, like what you're saying, to transplant another tree, we can remove the lights then. If not, we can leave the lights on and let them grow with the tree. That way it's going to save the tree for appearance purposes. Rather than, because he said he has to get in there with a bucket to get the, the lights off. And that's My only fear is, uh, you know, with the winds that we do get here, the lights. Light. The lights aren't going to last. Next year when you go to plug those lights in, they're probably not going to work. Yeah. So you're going to have to replace them anyway. So is it time that we do something about this? I mean, I mean, we can go look at these trees that I planted 17 years ago. And um, there is a, a technique to, to transplant these trees. For the root balls. For right. the root balls. Yes. And um, you put a ribbon on the north side of it, and you make sure you put the tree facing back at the north side. And I, I've had very good luck doing these transplants like that. And it always worked out. And um, you'd have a beautiful tree again. Right. Something that's manageable. So, so that's would we leave that, that, that in-house? In -house. Yeah, yeah, we do it oh, in-house. Yeah. We yeah. did that last time. Yeah. Okay. Do we leave that big tree up until that one takes root, or do you just? No, nope, you take that one completely take out. Completely and you put out. the new one right in that place. Okay. And then you would run a water hose from the water plant from the side of the water that's not chlorinated and put a soaker hose around it and let it, let it because the evergreen needs a lot of water. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing. As long as you give them water, they're gonna run. They're gonna they're gonna they're gonna, they're gonna grow. They grow fast. Yeah. Yep. No, I, I think that's uh, something we should really think about because at least at least look at the ones that we we, we planted and see what you, your thoughts are. And because spring is coming, it's time to transplant this in the spring. So, yeah, the ground's going to be soft. No, no, uh, it's definitely a good idea. We'll, we'll take a look at those trees that you, you're up by the blue building, you said? They're on the north side of the blue public works garage. Okay. There's about six or eight of them that we planted, and we spaced them out so they would grow. And, and, and we take the best looking one. And, and, and we have all the equipment that we can do this in house. Yes. Okay. We'll, we'll take a look at that and maybe bring it up uh, again next meeting. Anything else, Trustee Pelkey? No, that's all I have. Uh, Mr. Cooper, do you have anything you want to report? No, everything is pretty well up to date. The only thing is you were discussing about the fire department and the training. And I'm going to have to agree with Trustee Arnold. I believe that they schedule, and they know ahead of time what time they're going to schedule training and things there. They should be allowed to put a port potty over there for the training sessions. If they're, going to, if they're going to be at it for like a Saturday safari, there should be one right there. And there probably should be a handicapped one because if a firefighter goes in here with his gear on, he's going to need a little more room. But I think that's a, this would solve this problem. Now, I'm going to agree with Mr. Arno. I've been on these before. There's women involved in this and everything. I think we, when you accept the fire department's uh, dates, get the work done, I think you'd add the letter. We'd appreciate if you would purchase a, or have somebody deliver a porter party for the training. You know, that's more than fair. Okay. Anything else, uh, Mr. Cooper? No, I think that. Uh, <coughs> any, any comments from the public? Okay. And uh, we have no executive session, and I need a uh, Mr. Mayor, motion can I just to ask, adjourn. Can I just ask the board of one, one, one okay. other thing? Um, I would like to get the board's permission to offer a maybe one or two free public skating uh, events with the next coming uh, weekend that's uh, approved by the board. So it would be free of charge to uh, anybody that comes. I make a motion we do that. Second. Was there any uh, open skating during this break? For the this, yes, um, thank you, uh, Trustee Felky. So this break we had public skating today which was from um, 2.30 to 3.30. We had a stick and puck from 1.30 to 2.30. Tomorrow, public skating is going to be from 1.30 to 3 o'clock. Thursday, we're going to have a stick and puck at 1.30 to 2.30. Public skating following at 2.30 to 3.30. And public skating on Friday from 1.30 to 3 o'clock. And my understanding, it's been a pretty good turnout, right? Mr. We're, we're having a very good turnout for all. All so you want to make one of these days a free day? It's up to the board. I think when, we ought to make. When does the rink close? We have a tournament. The Canium tournament is going to be March the 18th. I have spoken to the coaches. 
if they can commit purchasing ice time that following week, I'll stay open until that weekend and then the rink will be shut down. So we're looking at either the 18th or the 25th. Correct. And I also told Mr. Lattimore today that if he needs a volunteer to, because the, there's only pickles down here during the daytime, and he's usually in the pro shop, and I said I'll come down, I'll donate some time and come down and uh, accept the money for the open skating. Very good. That's That's like that. Very nice of you to do that, uh, Trustee Arnold. Uh, any so, questions on the free skating? I think it would probably be a good gesture on our part to uh, show the appreciation for the people that support our rec center and arena. I think we're, we're on a, a well aware to, uh, way to make some pretty good revenue this year, Mr. Lenny. We're, we're, we're doing all right. And, and uh, I think this would be a good way to show our appreciation to the people who, who supported our facility. Uh, unless anybody else has a different idea. Do I have a second on that motion? Yeah. Uh, all those in favor of uh, giving a free day for public skating, say aye. 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 All those opposed, and Mr. Letchmore, you have your free day of skating. When would you like that? Thursday or Friday. You want to do one of the days that you already have. You want to do it this week? While school's out. Yeah. Correct? Right? That, that, yeah. That's say good. Friday. Maybe Friday. We'll, we'll, we'll and schedule. you'll post it on the sign. Say yeah. Friday is free skating. Perfect. Perfect. Anything else, Mr. Latchmore? Just for open skating. Right. Just for public skating. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 that's it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. So, second. All those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 All those opposed, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming.